All right, according to the uh, the technical um, um, folks, uh, I'm trying to think of a word, uh, the technical gremlins, I think I like that idea. We're live. Um, so hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. This is Folk You, a singer-songwriter round robin that has been going on here in the greater Chicagoland area, which you can really say is the greater Chicagoland area tonight because of where everybody is uh, 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 I'm say phoning in from, but it doesn't sound like we're broadcasting, broadcasting in from. In from. Uh, but uh, this but is this um, our, our 20th anniversary, anniversary show. show. This is 20 years for right this, this show. And then this and then whole this year, year, we'll be just celebrating 20 years of Folk U. And I'm really yeah, thrilled really to have to the have performers that are here tonight, tonight. Uh, Fake Blind uh, Date and Nick Juno. Nick's, Nick's, Nick's first, first performance here, here uh, for uh, Fake Blind Date. Date. Paul McComas has uh, done, this, done this this remote this version once and then um, two or three other times in the live version. Um, but um, let me just quickly say, for the benefit of those that might not know, what a round robin is, because I think that uh, we can all agree basically on what it is, but I'll just give you my take on it. The Round Robin is an opportunity for songwriters to get together, um, play a mini set of their own original material, and then depending on how many others are there with them, it then passes to the next performer or duo or band, sometimes the situation, and they play a couple songs and then they pass it on to the next, the next, however many are included. It comes around again to the first performer that goes around, and then there you go. In our case, we'll have three rounds, um, and uh, again, um, I'm thrilled to have them here tonight, uh, and I will give a, a more official welcome to them now. And you know what, guys, I realize we never decided the order for the performers. I say we go... Well, what do you what do you think? Do you, do you, do you guys have preferences? I hey, line up perfectly. Before we address before we that, that, we're now getting an echo, Larry, that we didn't get pre-show with you. Is, yeah. are, are you hearing it, Nick, or not? No, I'm not. But maybe it's my. Yeah. Um, hang on. No, I hear I hear an echo, but I don't have anything playing back in here. I just have my my desk speakers, and they're not loud. Ah. It, it, it might. It's gone. It might have been. You see, it might have been my headphones. My mic picking it's up. It's gone now. There we go. There we go. Nick, yeah. now, now Nick, the echo's bouncing Nick, around in here. In the words of Morrissey, the, you are forgiven. The, the, the <laughs> echo in your head, I think, will work a lot better here now. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. So what what um, what preference do you do you have? Do you Let's want? Let's give it um, to Nick to decide. I think it's lined up perfectly. Larry, fake blind date, me. Yeah, it's, I think that's good, up. and also because of, we've got the solo performers on the on the sides, and then we've got the duo in the middle. Yeah. I think that's a heck of, I think that's a heck of an approach. I'm Perfect. in the mood for some Larry O'Dean music right now, Seth. Yeah, you know what? I, I like that segue. So I officially welcomed everyone. I think that's good for now. Everyone will have stuff to talk about, and everyone has got uh, all kinds of things going on. So let me just uh, get my own self here and ready to go. Nick, happy twentieth anniversary, Larry. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Fake happy, Blind happy Date. anniversary. All right, guys, hang tight and we will see you soon. Uh, Nick, hang tight. You too. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. All right. <laughs> Such as it were. So uh, once again, yes, glad to be here. And as I was telling the, the crew, which I'll call them now, um, I always get a little bit uh, nervous for my first set, and then after that, things are usually pretty good. And for me, I, I was also saying that I think that being nervous is not necessarily a problem. Um, it is if, if it uh, impedes you from uh, uh, doing anything, but in my case, it's not so much that as it's just kind of like that first set, you know, I want to get past it and through it. But I still want to give you a quality performance, so hopefully I can deliver that. So yeah, wow, 20 years, it's, it's hard to imagine. Um, we started at uh, a, a venue that's still open in Chicago called the Beat Kitchen in, in 2001, but it was December of 2001. So December, when we don't normally have a show, was, was our 20th anniversary, but this is the, the first show to commemorate the 20th. And, and this would be the first of the 20th year. It's also our 19th, I had to consult my note over here, remote version of this since the pandemic uh threw everything into a chaos i guess is a good a good uh word for that 
even if things are, are uh, improving, I don't think we're still quite back. And I feel I'm not ready yet to go out and perform live, but I'm itching to do it. So um, uh, I was also telling everyone that I have like a new song. I was just trying to get ready for tonight. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, done yet. So I'm I'm sticking with stuff that has mainly been unrecorded. So it's all new-ish. Um, the first one is uh, the only one that has been recorded. And it's it's something from my my band, The Injured Parties. And from our, um, ooh, that looks even better, from our first of two so far albums, Fun With A Purpose. This is the lead-off song on the album. And it's sort of become my de facto uh, uh, pandemic mantra. So it's called for your protection. Uh, and it just seems like it fits um, in the, in the, in the very same way that certain lyrics in other songs, including ones I'm going to play tonight um, seem to take on uh, different uh, uh, permutations given our current situation. But this one directly addressing the idea of, you know, wanting to keep somebody safe, I think, I think is works on every level. Hopefully you'll agree. And yes, I am going to shut up at least in the talking and get to the singing. So this is for your protection. For your protection. I'll wear barbed wire in my hair. For your protection. On plated air packs with clean air. For your protection. I'll wrestle alligators in the mud for your protection. I'll let vampires suck my blood for your protection. I'll punch heavy weights in the jaw for your protection. I'll see every dad who be a saw for your protection. A dead bolt touching the door for your protection. I yank rusty nails from the floor. Protection. 
I will listen and I'll be ignored for your protection. I'll build a world until I find for your protection. I can't go on. Right, yes. <clears throat> so I feel pretty good. Um, if I didn't say it um, or make it clear, that's that's uh, my band, The Injured Party. We do a, a much more rocked up version of that song. And um, uh, yeah, so I hope, hope you liked it. It still still seems to fit the the, the mood and the mode of uh of everything going on right now but um i think the last couple of times i, I dropped it out of the set and it just seemed good to bring it back um so this this next one as i said these are all unrecorded so far um and uh this is based on a a, a line i heard somebody say on the street um back when we heard people on the street well we still hear people on the street and um I set out originally to write a, a, a scathing song about this particular enterprise. Um, and the, be, be, to make a long story short, because it's just something that drives, drives me nuts. And I'm being very vague here. But in the end, the song went in a completely different direction, which just goes to show, I think, that um, as, a, as a songwriter, maybe as any kind of creative, uh, it's it's good to not say no to stuff, you know, to follow where the the path seems to be leading you. Uh, quite often, it's not the one that you were anticipating, so there's no reason to be like, yeah, I still have to do it that way. So I'm I'm much happier with the the way the song turned out. It's called "Are You My Uber." <laughs> I got places to be, and to be I must go. It's too far to walk, believe me I try. Are you my Uber? Can I climb inside? I'm already late Please answer me now So I can make my escape I gotta get out Any place but here Are you my Uber? Will you make me disappear? Where I used to reside When they looked for me I would have to hide Now I'm watching from the other side And waiting for a ride
Are you my Uber? Let's take a drive. My destination is to simply arrive. I close my eyes, let me know when we're there. I I Thank you. Thank you. So, so how, how did that, how did that sound? Be honest now. It sounded great. The mix Beautiful. between guitar and vocal was perfect. Okay, good, good. It's, yeah. it's not always easy for me to know in this very technically uh, sophisticated uh, layout that I have. For which sure. means I don't have a technically sophisticated layout, but so. Um, Did you coming... play lead guitar for technically sophisticated layout in the late 90s? Say that again. Didn't yes, you say I... lead guitar for technically sophisticated layout? You're bringing or... back some 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 memories, the ones I can remember right. between the, sh the shooting up and the alcohol. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Those were some good times, though, I have to admit. And rest in peace, meet Loaf. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Loaf. Which they didn't call him, evidently. So. Okay. Like like exactly Howling Wolf, turning. I remember. I, I always love like the the uh, New York Times how they always will call like right you know, Mr. Wolf, you right. know, right? So uh, I I think I think it's the whole you know Howling Wolf. So all right, on, on that note, I'm gonna get out of here, which means let you guys take over. I'm I'm excited to hear this, um, and I'll see you next time around. You're not gonna ask us our favorite color or anything like. No, I'm going to I'm going to make some notes, though. Uh, so I, I may come up with something more profound than that. All right. Have, have a good time. I'll see you in a bit. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. OK. An honor to be here and fuck you. Fuck yeah. you. Fuck you, too. <laughs> fuck you. How many times has somebody said that on the show? Right? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'll introduce the first song, huh? Yep. Yeah. This is Carrie Lunenberg. You want to introduce me? This is Paul McComas. Yeah, and we are half of Fake Blind Day. This is Prudence. Dear Prudence the Penguin is the band's unofficial mascot. And by the way, here's our band logo. So we are actually a quartet, Fake Blind Date, but only half of us are here. So we are half Fake Blind Date, or we are half Nearsighted Date, or we are half Platonic Date, or something that is half of Fake Blind Date. Hmm? All right, you want to introduce the song? It's this called When song. the Yeah, it's called When the Swift. We're going to do When the Swift, which is a song I wrote with Eddie Bach, and then we're going to do one of Carrie's uh, songs. So When the Swift uh, with uh, Carrie Lunenberg on the lead box. Thank God. <laughs> When the swift boat was down, she can still see the sky, but also the ground. So she quits the race, chooses her own place, learns how to embrace the here and the now. Crushing ahead, Crushing ahead going, away, going nowhere, living your life, living your life without a prayer, without a prayer running out fears, running fears, gasping for hit the brakes if you When the sail of the Sailors learn that getting lost is a gift. Across the sea they land on the shore of sparkling sand. And they come to understand it's just like the swift. Rushing ahead, 
Living your life without a prayer. Without a prayer. Running off you. 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 Running if I fell, then persuade yourself The path is straight and it's true Every sign you find along the way You choose the view as a clue But the steps you take will lead nowhere to you Let the steps take you When the song is sung Singer finds there's another tune on her tongue There are notes to be heard Many an unsung word Music's done but her song has barely begun Brushing your hair, going away, going nowhere, living your life, living your life without a prayer, without a prayer, running off you, running off you, gasping for air, gasping for you, the brakes of you, brushing your hair, going nowhere, going nowhere, living your life, living your life without a prayer, without a prayer, all of your life, all of your life, fighting the fear, fighting just stop. stop. And it becomes clear you're here. And this is where we assume that tens of thousands of people are applauding and whooping and holding up lighters. And we don't know. They could be. No, well. <laughs> we don't know because... They're not going to come back until after the next song. So As long as there's thousands of people with masks on. Okay. <laughs> That's Just right. Like... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you and I are in each other's cohort. Um, so the way to do it, by the way, is first you put on the harmonica holder, and then you put on the Stetson. Not the other way around, kids. I hope you're paying attention at home. Do you want to introduce this, Carrie? Yeah, Carrie? The song is... Um, a song I wrote called Hillbilly Heartbreak. Um, and it's about the love of a good woman. <laughs> that's what I'm, that's the story I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> we all approve of that. Packed up everything he owned, he came riding into town Looking for his true love, she left him laying on the ground It was a hillbilly heartbreak, she left him passed out on the floor yeah. She said, you dirty dirt ball boy, I can't take this anymore hmm. Preach it, sister. Drinking vodka in the morning, whiskey in the afternoon, tequila in the evening, and he's howling at the moon. It was a hillbilly heartbreak. She left him shit based on the floor. Yes, she did. She said, You dirty dirt ball boy. I can't take this anymore. And it sounded like this.
He comes to town and finds a bar looking scruffy as a dog. I'm up there singing songs and the whole room turns to fog. It was a bitter, bitter heartache. Uh, him standing by the door. <laughs> she said, You did it to my boy. I'm gonna love you evermore. What did she say? She said, You did it to my boy. I know I'll love you evermore. Hey there. Hey, hey Nick. Sounded, sounded great, guys. That was so cool. Thank you, brother. Right on. Uh, I, I like the song a lot. It's uh, <laughs> Tequila in the Morning, or was it Tequila at Noon? Howling at the Moon? It's, about, it's actually Vodka in the Morning. <laughs> No, it's gotcha. in the morning with you. And That's what it is, yeah, yeah. That would do it. That would do it. We'll thank you in Scotland. You know, I'm gonna, I might, uh, um, yeah, that's quite a, that's quite a day there, though, I think. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't say you drink all day with that morning. Words to live by. Nick, we are looking forward to uh, hearing what you got for us here. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm going to jump in then. Um, this first song is a song called uh, Another Old New Year's Again. Uh, I'm going I'm to adjust my lighting here. It's getting kind of dark where I'm at right now. I'm going to try a light, see if this works. Yeah, that's a little better. There we go. Okay, great. Um, so this song is called It's Another Old New Year's Again. See if I can do this. you got it's another or new years again the stars in the heavens the planet of spins it's yearly conclusion again and again as new resolutions and when they begin it's another or new It's another old New Year's, another year gone. Halfway after sunset, halfway until dawn. Another old calendar, page being torn. It's another old New Year's again. So here's to the family. Here's to the friends, here's to the lives that have come to an end, and here's to our plans, their lives torn into shreds, it's another old new year's again, it's another old new year's, another year gone. Halfway after sunset, halfway until dawn. Another year dying and another being born. It's another old new years again. Should old acquaintance.
acquaintance Be forgot as her hands go spinning Around on the cloud Hold on to your hat If it's all that you got It's another old new years again Should old acquaintance be forgot It's another old new years again Happy New Year's, everybody. So this next song um, is uh, more of a story song. A lot of my songs over the years have come right out of the newspaper or out of the news of the day, you know, being a topical folk singer type guy. And uh, this was a sad story about a man who a number of years ago, 10 years ago or so, won a multi-million dollar lottery jackpot here in Michigan. And unfortunately, as the story goes, he couldn't hold on to the money for very long, ended up losing all of it and losing everything and um, uh, at one point the newspaper was quoted saying that a considerable amount of the winnings was spent on fireworks and then unfortunately got in some trouble in and out of the court system did a little time in jail and then a number of months ago was found floating down the Titabawasi River that leads out to Saginaw Bay here in Michigan so may he rest in peace but I wrote a song based on, loosely on that story and I call this the lousy couple of million dollar scratch off ticket blues it goes like this. Actually, it goes more like this. Well, the money comes. And the money goes kind of funny How the troubles hang around We come into this world with nothing Going out the same way And the titty boys are gonna wash it all away From a lousy couple of million after taxes, half of that To stand in, in the courtroom Will a defendant please remove his hat Now your pockets are turned back inside out The way it all began And the Titabawasi River rolls on So you found out the hard way Money isn't everything And you learned that life changing Wasn't what you thought it would mean like a Roman candle with a bang, then it's gone, and the old Titabawasi rolls on. Nice job. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, no, it sounded, it sounded awesome. Um, I'm, I'm liking this mood lighting here, too. 
Uh, I had a nice little light set up and the battery dies, so I switched to Plan B. Yeah. And I had and and uh, if the if the audio goes out, I have Plan C, and that's I have a cup and a long string <laughs> with a button all the way to Chicago. That'll totally work. <laughs> I've got one set up over here, the end set up, there it so is. just in case there it's it is. necessary. Yeah, so so um, uh, it sounded really good, uh, and and I was going to ask again. I know we communicated a little bit, but you're you're from Michigan, right? But are you are you from Flint or from the Flint area? Uh, yeah, born born in Flint, born in Flint. Uh, yeah. uh, lived in Flushing. You might remember Flushing, of uh, just northwest of Flint. Yeah. And uh, so I grew up in Flint. Left uh, in 1981. Joined the Marine Corps. Spent four years in of all places Hawaii. Oh. So you know. That was 1981, so nice. You know, it was super nice. So it's peacetime, yeah. Marine. I'm nobody's tough guy. It was it was totally a great time. I had a lot of my songs are based on stories about that that I'll might play later, but uh, uh, stories I heard uh, older guys that you know you're uh, stationed with. You hear stories about Vietnam and all that stuff. Wrote stuff like that, but it really got me interested in like the. Uh, you know, fighting against injustice and the whole topical folk singer thing like the Woody Guthrie's of the world, Phil Oaks, Bob Dylan, Jim Glover, Jim and Gene, stuff like that. So all the greats. Yeah, oh, I love them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just uh, you don't see uh, I don't run into too many Flintites, uh, Flintoids no, or whatever. Right, yeah. No. Uh, but uh, I mean, st still have some friends from that area, but I don't think I really know anybody or I'm in regular contact with anybody that's that's still in the town. You know? You'd be surprised. There's, there's still a, kind of a happening scene up there, uh, music-wise, uh, you know, the local 432 club, and yeah. a lot of the old guys you might have even known. Um, Rats of Unusual Size are up there. In fact, did you know that, that band? Does that ring a bell? Rats no, of but, Unusual Size? No, but I, I remember uh, you know that club, and of course, um, and one of the you mentioned Hats Pub or something, I think, early oh, on. Oh, right? yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Back then it was... Uh, um, the the pepper mill the rusty nail yeah rusty um, nail sure um uh billy's um, yeah there was there was a place called bernie's that had music for a while bernie's yeah 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 so yeah you know, anyway I, I where i started out was playing in places like hat pub and, and the rusty nail and, yeah 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 so so camaraderie my friend yes that's right that's yeah. right i'm hearing it so i will let you decompress a little bit again sounded great <laughs> Um, and I will see you on the next pass. And uh, hopefully I can live up to the bar that you have set very high for. Oh, Larry, you're too kind. Thank Bye. you so much. All right, see you in a bit. Oh, I think he was gonna say break a leg. It could be break your nose, but I, I, I won't be doing the, the latter, but, but <laughs> I'll, I'll take it as a leg. Um, yeah, so everybody's sounding really good. Fake Blind Date, of course. Uh, there's a little ambient stuff going on in some of the, the performances here that occasionally I turn my my uh, house uh, speakers up a little bit here. But uh, that's part of the whole remote experience uh, has been, um, you know, uh, that's great about it and sometimes vexing at the same time, too, as you're, you know, it's like it's not just always like the sound of a, of a child or a dog but you'll get like the other ambient sounds. And, and tonight we are, if, if it wasn't made abundantly clear, which I think it was, we have um, uh, Fake Blind Date is coming from Milwaukee and then Nick is coming from the Detroit area or from Detroit proper and I'm coming from Chicago. So we truly are in Chicago land and um, bringing you the, the, uh, <clears throat> the magic, I guess. <laughs> I hope it's the magic. So speaking of that, I'm going to play another newish uh, song um, that I think uh, title-wise will become very apparent once I get to the chorus here. And I don't want to kind of, you know, pre-deliver what the chorus is and, and what the song's about, but it'll be, it'll be pretty obvious once it gets going. Um, and again, thank you for, for being here uh, and, and the, the performers and, and uh, the folks out there. Appreciate it. Here we go. Call it a 
midlife crisis and all that it entails. But instead of leasing a Jaguar, you've been blasting out emails. Don't send me your dick pics. For them I never asked. Don't send me your dick pics. Or I'll just have to send them back. find it inappropriate doesn't it seem kind of wrong and don't be using your smartphone and texting me your schlong it's not that I am prudish I keep an open mind but when opening up an attachment it's not a dick I hope to find Don't send me your dick pics Don't send them to me Don't send your dick pics. It's something I just can't unsee. Maybe you need a vacation. You've been working every day. I never guessed that all the time was being used in quite this way, this way. This kind of thing won't do. I expect to never again receive any dick pics from you. And if the urge should strike, you shouldn't snort and scoff. Maybe. Chop that dick right off. Don't send me your dick pics. For them I never asked. Don't send me your dick pics. I'll just have to send them back. Or I'll just have to send them back. Or I'll just have to send them back. All right. Thank you. I think thank you for tolerating that or thank you for enjoying that or just thank you for being here yet again. So um, the next song I'm going to do is, um, as I said at the at the beginning um, in my little uh, spew, um, you know, planning the set every month, uh, pulling out older songs, uh, lyrics that will strike me as having 
uh, taken on a, a slightly different meaning or or uh, feeling or however you want to uh, think of it um, because of the situation that uh, we've been in and continue to be in. Um, that's definitely happening. But then also, um, when anything happens in a person's life, uh, you know, you react to it. And so sometimes you need a delayed reaction to react. Um, some people dive right in. That took me a little while, but I definitely uh, wrote a pandemic song. It's very specifically pandemic. It's called, well, you'll, you'll know what it's called when you hear the chorus. Um, and um, the dangers of doing something like that is, is thinking that it could become outdated. You know, I mean, I guess it's not such a bad thing. You just don't play it anymore or in the way that that songwriters can manipulate lyrics later. I'm not talking about a full Bob Dylan here, uh, but, uh, you know, tweak it for um, whatever might happen in the future. Of course, it's totally up to you. It can be done. But um, in the case of this, it still feels right to play it and it, it definitely still fits. So um, I'm going to I'm going to let it rip uh, and I hope you enjoy it. hugging my neighbors even if they don't want to be it's my first pandemic and nothing to compare it to it's my first pandemic what the hell am i supposed to do it's my first pandemic and nothing to compare it to What the hell am I supposed to do? What the hell am I supposed to do? Supposed to. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, ah, you got the pretty guitar there, Paul. That looks familiar to me. Yeah, right? But it's not, is the thing. It's a, an official replica. Yeah. I was so envious of your actual Western Sweethearts Gibson. 
Yes. Gibson? Is it a Gibson? Is that right? No, no. It's it's a um. Oh boy. It's no. It's not a Gibson. No. It's 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 a a a, a Gretsch. That's it, Gretsch. Oh, okay. yeah, I was so okay. envious, and I went online and I tried to find one, and they're all spoke for. Yeah. Okay? So I made one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the enterprising. I well, I'm this. not a collector. You yeah. will not find the Gretsch logo on here anywhere. I would never try to pass this off or sell it. I just love the way your Western sweethearts look. So I said, I want a guitar that looks like that too. <laughs> Okay. You know, I almost played that because I, I played that for like a couple of months and then because it just it's it's smaller scale and I usually just don't yeah. bring it out to the gigs. And then I thought, oh, you know, well, this is perfect here. Um, but uh, and I it went through my mind. It must have been the psychic link. You know, um, I should play that tonight. Right. But I just defaulted to the Martin, which is no problem. But I think I was leaving room so that I got <laughs> startled by this here. It, it's beautiful looking. Yeah. Thank you. I've made it, uh, you know, I used their artwork, obviously. But again, I'm not going to try to pass this off. It, it's it, an homage. You no, know, it's just a, a loving tribute. Yes, to, yes. To a guitar that you are fortunate, blessed, really, enough to have a copy. I you jumped on that one. Originals. Let me tell you. And now, and your your envy for it made me feel like even better about it. <laughs> perverse to say. Because I said, Larry, can you send me a photo of that damn thing? <laughs> and that's what I used to make these gals here. Oh, well, I'm 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 looking forward to hearing your edition of it, my man. So well, um, uh, I will I will let you guys go. You're very generous. Oh well, um, I'm 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 thrilled to, thrilled to have you, and even more so to hear this beauty. So, um, let you. me go and uh, punch myself in the face, and I'll see you next time around. But Larry, you know what? There's still a chance for you to get the official Gretsch Western Sweethearts out for your fifth song. Well, there is. I just have let, let me ponder that as well okay. as that favorite color question. So I will I'll see ponder you next time it in around. Your heart, like Mary pondered the news that she was going to. Be the mother of the savior. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love you, brother. We'll see you at All the right. other end. See you in a bit. Okay. Carrie, I believe you have an introduction for Wanted Poster. Yeah, wanted Poster, well, this is from your your epic, uh, Unplugged. Um, but I also uh, want to just acknowledge that tomorrow, the, the show is being recorded on Friday, uh, January 21st. Tomorrow, January 22nd, is the 49th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Um, and across the country, and uh, there are some issues, and the Supreme Court's taken up a case that could make this maybe the last anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Hopefully not. Um, so wanted poster, women making decisions about their lives, <laughs> having the freedom to live the life they want. You want to go for it? It's a radical notion, ain't it? The radical notion. There's a sign in the window Every story in town All is forgiven Your family needs you back Come home now There's a side to a story that the signs don't say. So take your time, girl. Making sweat, you gotta run away, run away. Now they're putting up a wanted poster. Right within a word on it about what it is she's running from. Well, I don't see no bruises. I don't see no scars. But I do see the face of a woman whose love has been stretched out too damn far. They say love is patient. They say love is kind. But if you don't see it when your lover starts to take you for granted, your love's blind. Now they're putting up a wanted poster like she's Jesse Chins or Al Capone. Try to 
and sentence for the rest of her life to the prison that they call home. Let's go. Now they're putting up a wanted poster Every neighborhood in every town Cause they're framing her and I'm gone now They're determined to drag her down But I don't understand and you don't know mine, but we both gotta cover our tracks if we're running from the lives we left behind. Don't ask any questions, that's a whole can of worms. But if you're gonna go back, if you're gonna go back, you better do it on your own terms. Now they're putting up a wanted poster Like a freedom is a threat to man I would bet you how they're judging her That's the reason why she ran Now they're putting up a wanted poster For the runaway wife and mom But there ain't a word on it about What it is she's running from no, there ain't a word on it about what it is she's running from. Not a fucking word on it about what it is she's running from. Wanted poster. You know what? Six strings. I don't like six strings. I'm gonna go back to four. I'm gonna go back to the six string. Yeah, Maybe. let Carrie go back to the six string. That's two strings too many for me. And uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Carrie to introduce the song in a second. But once again, we are half of Fake Blind Date. And uh, I also want to just mention that once upon a time back in a Era we call the early 80s here in Milwaukee. <laughs> I was a teenage kid who used to show up, sometimes with a fake ID, <laughs> for shows by uh, Carrie's band at the time, which was Red Ball Jets. And dream come true is 40 years later, we're in a band together. All right, take it, sister. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Floating through the floor, breathing no more. His touch, I adore. Just me for me, just me from me. Never will I know why he let me go. Oh, why? I love him so, just me for me, just me from me. Stealing my breath, but the theft was so good. Stealing my soul, but I knew he understood. Spinning in love in unlimited space, spinning with stars I can only see his face. That song is called Peace. I gotta say, this is the first time we played it together. <laughs> it sounded good. I like I like what you guys got going on. It's very good. Oh, thank you, Nick. Yeah, Carrie wrote that and uh, put so much special, I think. Yeah. I'm just privileged to play on it. And I just gotta, you know, I just gotta explain to him when he says, oh, how is the deepest thought in his eyes are the most beautiful view that he's ever seen? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, Nick, we enjoyed your first set, and we're uh, eagerly anticipating your next. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you'll find I've got sort of a, a thread here. Um, happy go lucky. Uh, just kidding. I don't write any happy. <laughs> songs. In fact, uh, uh, it's uh, when I first started singing um, uh, back in the '80s and early '80s. I really sort. I wanted to learn about folk singer because I was I didn't have a band. I wanted to start playing, and I just uh, I really got into the old-fashioned cool folk music. And uh, one of my first songs I learned was "On the Banks of the Ohio," oh, and yeah. it's been and it's been downhill ever since. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you got the stops and you got the vest. So oh, take hey, it, the, man. Take uh, it. There you go. I'll take it. Take it very much. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Fake blind date. Oh, by the way, Larry, it was definitely break a leg not punch in the nose, never. So uh, this song, as I was mentioning, is um, one of my happy-go-lucky songs. All kidding aside, uh, there's a band here in Detroit called the Amino Acids, and Scott Boyink is uh, um, a member of the band. And he, I heard a number of years ago, he was doing this thing where he was doing free Narcan training. Uh, Narcan, you know, the, the medical device that's used to reverse the uh, effects of an over, opioid overdose. And uh, I heard about this, and I thought, man, it's, it's amazing. This somehow, if you get this to a person who's overdosed in time, you can save their life and buy them a little time to get you know, first responders there to maybe try and you know, resuscitate. I'm not here to judge people. I'm not pointing fingers. You know, uh, but it's like if you're walking by um, a swimming pool and somebody's drowning in the deep end and there's a life ring on the side of the fence, could you not just throw it in there? Um, so this thing, this Narcan, is, uh, I heard about it and said, man, this is like a little angel that flew down from heaven to save someone. And I thought, no, it's more like an archangel that came to fight death. And uh, as a songwriter, I thought, 
Archangel and Narcan, and I thought, came up with a song called Narcangel. When the doctor's writing out your pain prescription, if you only knew what that really meant, you'd be getting out your own ink pen, writing your last will and testament. You're out of work, but you still got bills to pay. And you run out of your script. Seem like a curse. Still need a fix. Only gonna get worse. And those things you used to swear you never do. But I'm somebody else. Not standing in these shoes. shallow breath we pulse and the eyes roll back in your head all the one thing stand between you and the abyss if you haven't heard a word man this is what it is and those things you swear you never do without somebody else not standing in these shoes Archangel, yeah. Like I said, if um, that should be available everywhere to help people. So uh, this next song is um, about a story I read in, in in high school. We probably all read this story in high school, "The Lottery" by Shirley Jackson, and uh, that saw that story always affected me and always moved me. If you if you know the story, um, little town America, certain time of the year, June twenty seventh. Everybody in town gathers together and they pull pieces of paper out of a box. And if you have the slip with the black dot on it, you're immediately and unceremoniously stoned to death on the spot. Everybody takes place, everybody takes part, from the smallest children to the oldest people. Then they dust off their hands and get back to work and they do it again next year. And it's one of those stories that strikes you like, um, it's just something we've always done. Uh, we don't really know why we did it. And uh, it's kind of, so people say, is it like racism or is it nationalism or is it like bigotry or hatred? Uh, you know, fill in the dots, fill in the blanks. And I, when I play this, I often say that uh, it's kind of almost like being online. This is sort of what I'm thinking now. You can be online and say something uh, like, I like the Tigers. What do you know about baseball? What? Um, I love dogs. Oh, so you hate cats? I didn't say that. It's, it's, it's so quickly we turn on each other. And so um, in the story, it said, uh, you know, one thing that the people remembered from 
the oldest days of traditions is how to throw the stone. And isn't that true? How quickly we are to throw the stone. Here we are. This song is called How to Throw the Stone. <laughs> It was a beautiful morning, there was excitement in the air. Boys out running round, gathering up stones, piling them in the square. Little kids out running round, playing tag, making lots of noise. All the girls looking over their shoulders, looking at the boys. Church bells all were ringing, conversation in the air. Someone said, seems like we did this just the other week, has it really been a year? Someone said, I heard they're talking about giving this up in the North Village a few miles away. Old man said, pack of damn fools, what's wrong with people? It's a black box, it's a pile of rocks, it's a three-legged stool. Old wooden chips and our paper slips and the kids are all out of school. It's a stopwatch, it's a watch pot, half forgotten set of old rules. It's just something that we've always done, it's just something that we do. All the families were there. The heads of households will draw for families and the children in their care. And that family will take a turn. They'll have to trust their luck. But the one family member looks just not gonna be enough. It's a black box, it's a pile of rocks, it's a three-legged stool. Old wooden chips and our paper slips and the kids are all out of school. It's a stopwatch, it's a watch pot, half forgotten set of old rules. It's just something that we've always done, it's just something that we do. After a song can turn to silence And love and kindness turn to violence When the crime is committed by everyone Then the blame can't be laid on anyone No one living really remembers the old rituals All the songs that once were sung and now unknown The one thing the people all remember They remember how to throw the stone They remember how to throw the stone They remember how to throw the stone Thank you, I, hope, 
I held off much. on my superlatives till you got the cans on, but you could see the visual of the applause. So yes, yes, the international applause. Yes. Yeah, yes. That that covers all spectrums. Yeah, wow, that's that's great. I always like the, the uh, literary references and songs, and uh, yeah. you, the the uh, the um, the lottery is pretty stunning. I, I put a note in uh, the comments about it. You know, it um, when it was published, it caused. Uh, you know, people either loved it or hated it, and quite a few yes. people canceled their subscriptions to the New Yorker. Yes, yes absolutely. I read more letters to the to the magazine than they ever got from right. that, and people were afraid or upset, and uh, they didn't understand. and And that's the power of art, uh, yeah. literature, paintings, photography, sculpture, music, to move someone and make them think. That's all you can ask for. Right, right. I mean, it's just that that so many people. I mean, you. It's such a brilliant story to think. I mean, I could never in a million years imagine being upset. I mean, ups upset by it, yes, but not upset in the way that someone would cancel a subscription. I know, right? Yeah. So it, it definitely must have struck a chord with people who saw themselves in those townspeople. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, right? Yes. Oh, I always think about that. Like, uh, and not to quote my own song, but to quote my own song, the part about. Uh, the people had all assembled, all the families were there, heads of households will draw for families and the children in their care. They're, right. they're going to pull a lottery ticket for to maybe stone the children in their care. Or sure. And it was, the, it was the the housewife, the mother that got stoned in the end, remember? Um, right. Uh, it's Spo mind Spoiler alert, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. If you have, come okay. on. You must have read it. Yeah. <laughs> No, but but right. you're you're the the thing that's astonishing, and certainly part of it's the time as well. But is that the there really is no violence in it? I mean, it's all implied because at the end, yes. if I remember right, they just move toward her because right. she's isolated and she's gotten the the spot on the paper or whatever. Yes, the spot right. on the paper. I remember and, how they they even put a stone in the smallest like little toddler's hand because right. everyone has to do it. Right, and and this again is societal. There are. It's not literal stoning, but look what we do as society to people, and not all of us, but so many of us, right? right? Like, um, well, you're right when you say you know it can be read metaphorically or allegorically a lot of different yes. ways. About considering the time it's written, certainly conformity, you know, you could see that, yes. you know, like yes. blindly following just because yes. that's how it's always been done. There is the one character, and I think that's what he says. It's just kind of like that's how we've always done it, you know. So like, why mess with it uh, without thinking about what's you know the brutality of the whole yes yes so incredible i think i think that story holds up even today and has Absolutely. resonance into the present so i'm i'm just i'm thrilled and it is obvious you were you were inspired by it not just in how you verbalize that but when you got into the song so oh, yeah, yeah. I, I could feel it yeah <laughs> thank you thank you yeah yeah so i yeah. so you probably need to take a breath yes. <laughs> So I will see you for the last round. And once again, thank you so much for being here. You sounded really great. Thanks. Um, I'm so happy to be doing this. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. It's an honor. And fake, Our, and fake blind date too. Yes. Yes. We will. We will hear from them momentarily. And um, so, so you've earned yourself a break. See you in a little bit. Thanks. And uh, that brings it to me to bring my portion of the evening uh, to a close. And wow, you know, I will sum this all up at the end, but yeah, everybody's been really just wonderful tonight. So, um, you know, for the 20th anniversary, I couldn't think of, uh, I couldn't picture a better group. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be here with them, even though I'm not here with them, but I'm, we're here in this little private, you know, computer void, which we've devoided and made it a little more personable, I hope. Um, so for my last song, um, uh, this is one again that seems to have like, you know, added resonance now. And in some ways, some of it seems trivial in comparison to a lot of what's happened in the last uh, the last two years, almost two years. Um, and actually, uh, before the show, I, I was thinking, what what exactly what time was it that, you know, uh, that this occurred, this thing occurred that inspired the song? Because the the general um notion of it was something that had been in my mind for a while and then there was this fire at dollywood you know uh, dolly parton's amusement park and i was thinking well, what was that like a, you know middle uh, 
you know, of, of the, the, the teens. It was, yeah, it was November of, of 2016. There was this big fire at Dollywood. And, um, but when I l looked it up, uh, I, I saw that there had been more, uh, another incident of fires. I think they weren't as bad in, in October of last year. So it's like, um, you know, hang in there, Dolly, hang in there, Dolly would. But, uh, uh, it seems uh, pertinent in in uh, more than just the the uh, obvious way of what the song title refers to that this would come around again because hey dollywood this opening line seems new again sadly so um it's a rather long-winded introduction but i'm i'm certainly one for those sometimes so i will get down to it um i can tell you it's called thoughts and prayers <laughs> in danger the flames are getting close the firemen of Pigeon Forge almost gave up the ghost while the world was watching smoke vanished in the air thanks to our collective thoughts and prayers Jet up in the sky on a routine flight. Dropped off of the radar in the middle of the night. The relatives all gathered at the airport where they shared in an emotional outpouring of thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers, prayers and thoughts, tossed anywhere, just waiting to be caught. There's a bombing at a mosque and a shooting at a school. Poisons in the pipes, rusty water rushes through. Everyone was saddened once they were made aware. Immediately responding with thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers, prayers and thoughts. Tossed anywhere, just waiting to be caught. The ice is getting thin. Penguins stuck in the slush doze off and dream that when they wake up, it all will be repaired. Miraculously by thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers, prayers and thoughts. Tossed anywhere, just waiting to be caught. Thoughts and prayers, prayers and thoughts. Tossed anywhere, just waiting to be caught. Thoughts and prayers, prayers and thoughts. Tossed anywhere, just waiting to be Hot. Hey there. Yes. Yay. Yes. All right. Yes. Preach it, brother. Preach it. Yes. <laughs> Can you get an amen? Amen. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Larry. I felt it. Yeah. Uh, what did so you say about a pelvis? What? <laughs> oh shucks um 
Well, I'm gonna I'm going to step aside. Let no, you guys. No, 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 no. Let's chat a little. Oh, you want to chat? Yeah. All right. Well, you chatted with Nick, so let's chat a little bit. My only disappointment with that great performance there, by the way, Larry. Yeah. Was that it was not done on an authentic Western sweethearts guitar. <laughs> Well, it does have the, uh, yes, I know, you know, I, I, I did think about it for a moment. I know where it is in the, in the closet over here. And I thought, yeah, I can get that out. But then I also thought I got to pay attention to what's going on here. And it just, I thought it could lead to, but I mean, it, it was, it was, the thought really did cross my mind because I thought it will be serendipitous if I do that then, right? That's fair. Creating some kind of harmonic convergence between the axes. But I thought I have to be devoted. I already had to get up once, and I thought that you know, low. I can't allow for any problems just to bring out that beautiful guitar. Okay. Um, next but, time, next month, February show. Yeah. Western Sweethearts. I won't be performing. Carrie and I won't be performing, but you will be, and I want to <laughs> see that Western Sweethearts. I, I, you know what? Just remind me of it. I mean, I seriously remind me of it and I will bring well, that. Well, your out. freaking secretary receptionist. Yes. Yes. When it comes to the Western sweethearts motif, for sure. Well, send me a W9. Or yeah. But, yeah but, no, you, it, do it, you can put the pinup girls in between the shots. That's all a little thing. Yes. Yes, for sure. Or the shots in between the pinups. One or the other. <laughs> And now he's he's taking a nice. I don't know what's in that mug, Larry. What's in that mug? You know, I I I would frequently say things like whiskey or bourbon, but it's just plain old H two O. I'm just trying to keep myself hydrated. <laughs> We're yeah. drinking booze over here, man. <laughs> oh, say, oh, please, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I mean, or in my case, it might normally be coffee as well. And I'm I'm the kind of person not at this time coffee. of day. Oh, I can drink coffee I, five minutes before I go to bed. It doesn't bother me at all. Do you mind if I show you the largest ashtray in creation? It's beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it? It's beautiful. We don't smoke, but look at this goddamn thing. You know, if, if you pick that up quickly, I might think some tambourine is about to happen. It's got that kind of, you know, uh, that kind of girth. <laughs> You could turn that into an ashtray tambourine, which which just to follow through on what you said earlier, I think was a band that I also saw once at the Double Door. <laughs> they were pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, man. It mo not a, not I a, followed their, their, their 1984 tour. Yeah. Yeah, you were a groupie on that shit, yeah. weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I I was. I was there. I was the, their official bitch boy. For them. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Walter Skippy it. Jacobson was the official bench boy for the Cubs once upon a time. Oh, right? Yes. Yes, he was. He's the bat boy. Yes. Well, I, I prefer my role as the as the bitch boy. So yeah. And I prefer Harley Quinn to Bat Boy, but that's yeah. a whole other conversation. <laughs> Most deaf. <laughs> All right. Um, I will uh, let you guys go, but I will see you again on the on the other side. Indeed. Right. Thank you, sir. Of course. Hang tight. Okay. Once again, dear Prudence, our mascot, Prudence the Penguin, Carrie Lunenberg, uh, once upon a time of Red Ball Jets, one of the bands that I idolized, and I used to push myself to the front of the crowd, right against the front of the stage, and hope that Molly Putz, a.k.a. Carrie, would maybe, I don't know, deign to sweat or spit on me. I'm sorry, I don't remember you at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're in a band together now. So, uh, ain't that America. <laughs> no, this, this here shit is called, <laughs> parenthesis, Y period, K period, M period, close parenthesis, goldfish. It will all make sense once we get to the chorus. I told you not to feed it. I said it had been fed. My warning was not heeded. And now my pet is dead. You killed my goldfish. You shouldn't have done that. His water was all cloudy from the food you sprinkled in. 
We floated on the top, floated on the top, a testament to your sin. You killed my goldfish. You shouldn't have done that. Because you sent him swimming into the great beyond, yon, yon, yon. I have to scoop his corpse out, flush it down the john. You killed my goldfish. You shouldn't have done that. And my goldfish, as it died, it made a sound very similar, don't you think, Carrie? Very similar to the sound of this saxophone I'm about to play. Keep going. I know I'm getting That was exactly like that sound, except for one note right in the middle. What's that Don't know why you did it, what pleasure you derived. But now my heart is broken, how I wish he were alive. You killed my goldfish. You should not have done that. You, you killed my goldfish. You oh, stay away from my cat. Stay away from my cat. Stay away from my cat. You stay away from my cat. Stay away from my cat. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's always good advice. That's always good advice. You know, that reminds me of a famous Mark Twain quote, something like, now, it is possible to pick up a tomcat by its tail, but you'll quickly find out why you shouldn't. <laughs> Amen. All right. Looking forward to your fifth of five, my friend Nick. I, and listen, it, it's been great being here tonight in, a, in the big, uh, like you pointed out, the triangle. What is it? Chicago to Milwaukee to Greater Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, we're All in Milwaukee, way back to, Detroit, and uh, yeah. Larry is in Titan. There it is. That's awesome. Connect the dots. Right? Right. That's the Bermuda Midwestern Triangle. Yes, yes, yes. The Great Lakes, the Great Lakes Triangle. How, how many shipwrecks are right in the middle? I think probably <laughs> at the, in, in the middle. Well, the Edmund Fitzgerald among others. Oh yeah. The wishes hope they would have made right folks day. Yeah, it's pretty good. Me, <laughs> okay, well here's uh, my last song. Um, like I mentioned, I was in the Marine Corps stationed in Hawaii, and uh, I was stationed in Marine Barracks Pearl Harbor. And uh, we guarded the main gates and the side gates and uh, different parts of the buildings. And uh, one night while on duty, um, a tragic thing happened. Uh, when you stood post on this gate, uh, there was a log book and people would make an entry like, post 13, all secure, nothing unusual to report at this time, all government property and equipment is in sight and accounted for, etc. cetera. Uh, nowadays, they probably use an iPad, or if they even do this. But back then, it was a log book. You made entries. Well, one night at 11.30, uh, a young Marine drew his service pistol and committed suicide. No suicide note, no real explanation. And when something like that happens, it takes everyone by surprise, as this sort of thing always does. And um, uh, I just hope that young, that young man found peace. And uh, this song is, uh, again, based loosely on that uh, uh, incident. I call this the 2330 Blues. <laughs> mm. 
2300 Post 13 all secure There's nothing unusual To report at this time He came from a town outside of Auburn He joined the car on a whim but the green machine was not his scene He knew he'd sink if he didn't swim So he plugged away for a year or so Struggling day by day And although he'd not gone crazy yet I guess he knew he was on his way Twenty-three fifteen, Post 13 all secure There's nothing unusual to report at this time You'd never think he wasn't happy But then you never know I guess everyone's got pain inside Sometimes the pain don't show Of all the things on his troubled mind He never said what bothered him most He drew back the slide on a 45 pistol And relieved himself from his post 2330 Post 13 all secure There's nothing unusual To report at this time Well ten men went out on the 8 to 12 But one last man came in the palm tree swaying, I was playing a humble version of dust in the wind. Well, everyone's got their opinion, and everybody knows. But one mile as a crow flies might be five as a river flows. 2330. Post 13, all secure. There's nothing unusual to report at this time. There's nothing unusual There's nothing unusual To report at this time Thanks for listening. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Okay, you need to get into this composition. Yeah. Sister, there you are. Okay. Yeah, there you are. Uh, uh, we, 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 lost, we lost Nick. Hopefully he'll... Oh, no, we got to get Nick back. Nick, Yeah. come so, back to the five and dime, Nicky G, G, Dean, Nicky Dean. Yeah, it looked like at one point his, his signal was a little weak, I thought, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, so hopefully he'll be back. Come on. Maybe if I put my mask on. We can't leave mask. without Nick. Yeah, right. We're just going to have to camp out here. I think we'll so. get Nick back. I think if I put masks, two masks on, Nick will return. Just watch. I feel he, safer. He picked I, up the Tomcat by the tail. <laughs> Maybe he did. <laughs> That's a good theory. I like that. Well, we can talk about him since he's not here, I guess. You know, talk about yeah, him. you know what? I think Sherry in English One has a crush on him. I heard, I heard her talking outside the locker. That, oh, no, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Looking at these desperately. No, wait a minute. Let me see. This is interesting because, of course, nobody can see the machinations that I'm going through here. You can, you guys can't see it, or can you? He's got like no, a little ghostly no. box down there right now. We see you and we see us. I'm going to hit it and just to see what's happening here, yeah, but we, be, be prepared. It might be some sort of alien infraction instead Ooh, of Nick. A vortex. Hey. Uh, I see. He's he's trying to load up is what's he's going on. He's going to come he's, back in. He's loading. Yeah. Come loading on, in. Nick. Loading in. Come on, Nick. You got I, this. Shit. I hope he doesn't show up and he's naked. On the other hand, that would kind of be a nice way to end the night. You know, he just oh, like strips it all off. And ratings will go up, and I think some of the viewers will be very pleased, actually. Yes. Why? Well, <laughs> well, or naked, but just the best. <laughs> Even better. Yes. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him down here so he has a moment to 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 gather his wits about him. I think so. Broke back folk, you. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Well, you guys sounded fantastic. 
you well, know, um, you. it's an honor to have you both. Um, you. So do you go way back in terms of uh, I'm half paying attention to the to, to what you're talking about. And but in terms of I couldn't quite figure out if, if yeah. you like were in a band back in the day or not. I didn't know her back then, except I was a fan of her band and some of the other Milwaukee punk and punkabilly and kind of new wave bands yeah. oil tasters and ex cleavers oh. plastic land you, and an homage to the, you had a little homage to the oil tasters there with that saxophone oh. there oh my god god bless richard lavalier i miss him so much it was actually this month how many years ago like six oh, years ago yeah. seven years ago that he passed he was like a brother to me and and she's in a band called the six wives of richard that's uh, an homage to Richard Lavalier. Wow. I'm very impressed, Larry, that you know of Richard. Well, you know, I'm I'm not from Chicago originally. I'm from Michigan, you know, but I remember I, I uh, working in college radio when the Oil yeah. Tasters album came in and I was blew me away. And then I saw them uh, probably at Joe's Star Lounge, which was the place to play at that time right. in Ann Arbor. Right. Um, maybe I'm getting it conflated and it was in, it might've been in Detroit and it like, um, oh, God knows bookies or something like that. It doesn't matter where it was. As long as you saw Richard yeah. with the two rubber fried eggs on his base, singing and strumming and yes. making fucking evil magic. Oh, they were yeah, fantastic. So much. I just remember that the, the album itself was great, but of course, you know, the measure of it is the show too. And they right. were, they were great. Wow. Nick is almost showing back up. So he knows I that. I saw we're, that. Yes. He uh, knew what it appeared as the monolith from 2001. It was all black. He, he would a, be, he would be the dualith, I think. The trialith because God, there's two the of quad, us. The quadrilith. Let's keep the going. Quadrilith because of Kari. That's right. <laughs> yes. That's right. Come on back, Nick. You got this. You got this. I think Come he's. On. Hopefully, he's not panicking. You know, he needs to just like take a breath and whatever whatever is going on. He we will get it. If if we don't for any reason, then we'll cross that bridge. We'll cross the Rubicon when it happens. But that's right. And we'll give him, we'll give him a little more time talk for another two hours and forty five minutes <laughs> until midnight. Yeah, because then it's another day. Well, who who knows? It could have just been that he just rocked it so hard there that it just like you know blew blew the uh, the whole thing to smithereens. He blew I don't out know. his Wi-Fi. That's just what happened. And he yeah. blew out our minds. I think no, no. I don't I don't know of anybody that's done any of these where they've actually just plugged in with an with an Ethernet or whatever, which is what they recommend. But mm -hmm. but mostly like your your signal's good, mine is good, and I'm right by our router, you know. But um router, I barely know her. <laughs> Where's the ring shot? I was gonna say you need there you go. You're your own drum crash there. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. Symbol crash, symbol crash. <laughs> Well, I hope he shows up. Um, but I mean, in the meantime, I, I I would hate to like just just leave and then he. We'll give it a little bit more time. But um, can we what, self promote? Yeah. What do you got coming up? We got two gigs coming up. Go One for it. Is uh, to be scheduled in Milwaukee, and it's going to be at Lineman's. Ah. And uh -huh. It's going to be a fundraiser for Planned Parenthood advocates, and that's going to be in either late March or sometime in April. Yeah, you made the reference to um, tomorrow being the anniversary f of, of Roe v. Wade. And yeah, I mean, talk talk about awful times to be living in and then to have to put to add that to the the pyre, you know. Right. I mean, it's not done. It's not a done deal yet, but uh, it's, it's it's, you know, considering it's very the court. serious. There are 26 states across the country that if Roe falls, abortion will be effectively illegal in 26 states. It's disgusting. It is incredibly frightening for, I fear, I mean, I, I, I just, for young women everywhere, and it disproportionately impacts, you know, people of color, and um, yeah, there, it, it, abortion will be there if you have the money, right? Right, you can oh, right. that's been always will be if you have the money. I mean, I enjoy The Handmaid's Tale as, uh, very much as media. Yeah, but, is, but not as reality. No, and this is going exactly. to impact people in, in, in just so... so the gravity of this is can't be understated no and you should never just uh you know the the having the money certainly uh it, that's no excuse you know that 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 it could still they could still manage it whatever so no it's not 
not an excuse. So yeah, but thanks for letting us kind of yeah letting me talk about that yeah. a little bit. Larry, right. we're only talking in terms of women. We're only talking about fifty-one and a half percent of the population. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So, for sure. You know, and I was saying to Carrie earlier. I, I guess it's radical notion to prioritize thinking, living, breathing, feeling women and girls over a mass of cells. Call me crazy, but I'm going to make that call. Well, yeah, I'm going to make that call as well. We're we're in, I'm we're in Wisconsin, and in Wisconsin, the there's a statute on the books from 1849. 1849 that will go into effect if Roe falls. It has no exceptions for rape or incest or the health of the mother. Jesus. So You're talking about those slavery days of 1849. Back to, yeah. it, Wisconsin became a state in 1848 and it didn't take them long. They had to like right away. Sure. Take that right away. And it's, we're going to go back to 1849. No, yeah. we won't. We won't. We're going to freaking fight this. Tooth and no, so, I mean, I'd like to think I'm generally a glass half empty kind of guy, but I'd, I'd like to think that uh, this will, even if, if it gets as bad as that, that we'll, we'll have to get it back to, you know, where it was at, at the very least. It's just still astonishing. All right. Let's see what Nick put a note up here. What do you I don't know what happened. It, 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 it kicked me off and I can't seem to get back on. Is it? No, I thought it was going to be a Nash, a mash note for Sherry, <laughs> who has a crush on him from English One. Sadly, no. Wow. Mm. Let me just write something to him here. This is happening in real time. So mm. thanks so much. for. Okay. It's great to play music with the three of you. Hope to have cross paths in the future. Mm. Um, I miss you. Um, I miss you, Nick. I'm going to make a quick note to him so he doesn't start crying, you know. Maybe if he tries again right now, there will be a, a Roe v. Wade anniversary miracle <laughs> and he'll like appear. I think he cracked yeah. open the, the beer that was waiting at his feet. So I just put down, you know, that we miss you and I'll be in touch because I, th I think he's just he's, he's having problems. That link mm -hmm. should still work to get back in, but who knows what's going on. So, all right. Yeah. So um, once again, thank you so much for playing. It's good to see Paul, um, Carrie. It was great to to, to meet you <laughs> here, mm -hmm. and um, let's let's do more in the you know the coming year and beyond. You know, I, I I've still got this blocked out through mid year as remote, but you know, as soon as right. we can pivot back to as soon as I'm comfortable doing it, you know, the the next thing will be finding a venue, which which I've got ideas about. Because mm -hmm. I don't think the venue that we had is 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 uh, up and running, and yeah. But I'm just taking these things one at a time. For sure. In the meantime, we're going to be doing the remote, and um, you know, while it's not as great as being in the same room with everybody, uh, it's it's something, mm -hmm. and uh, and I I really appreciate you being here for the 20th anniversary. It's kind of yeah. stunning to think that it's been 20 years. I was going to say, I mean, what an honor to be here for the 20th. It's my fourth time with you two in person and two remote. And the fact that you've continued this over the past almost two years now um, as a remote series, you bring in hope and joy and music to people, uh, despite the, the worst, you know, the worst circumstances imaginable. And Carrie and I were saying, you know, God, what would life be without music? What would it be without folk, without rock? It would, it would be meaningless and pointless. Yes, it would. It would. It would. Not, I mean, I can't even imagine it. You know what I mean? Super, you know, the words fail thinking yeah. about that. So, so that's yeah. nice of you to say. I know it helps me mentally to do it for sure. Yeah. You know, but it, it wouldn't be uh, anything, you know, remotely like what it is if it wasn't for the other performers. So, uh, so I really appreciate it. Like, so I will I will cease my blathering and you know we 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 thank um, Nick Juno who who has been kicked out not on our our end but is having a hard time coming back to officially say goodbye but again he's in the notes saying he had a great time and when we loved him yeah I suspect that Mitch McConnell had something to do with getting rid of Nick <laughs> yeah I, I I always blame everything on on uh, M M C squared there yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, I'm going to like, we can say our official goodbyes and then when we're off the air, we'll just take a moment to, to gather ourselves before we go. So don't, don't go away, but okay. everybody, thanks for tuning in. Okay. We'll be back third Friday next month as we continue the 20th year celebration. 
Um, thanks to Fake Blind Date and Nick Juno. And I'm Larry O'Dean, the host, Low These 20 Years. And uh, we'll see you in February. And with the with the, with the beautiful guitar. Uh, which <laughs> yeah, one? Yeah, right. Which I, you, I, Larry, I, I, I've I'm been entreated with having to do. All right. So let's wave and uh, hang tight, guys.